Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. 33% Quinnipiac poll on the job that Biden is doing. Think about that. Like Trump hovered between probably 35% and about 45% always. Even the Democrats are stepping away from it. Independence, which you need, they've walked away. Some of them have run away. Republicans were never there, but the ones that were like, well, hopefully he can bring us back to some normalcy, uh, they're like, nah, we're done. He is, this is an absolute giant debacle. That's why he's out there pushing for, let's get rid of the filibuster. You know, look what Georgia did. Georgia changed the rules. I mean, now you're only going to have 17 days to vote early. Now you're only going to, wait, what? 17, I thought they were taking away the vote. No, 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 you get 17 days to vote early, and the precincts can stay open from 7 to 7, uh, you know, uh, you know, but they can't give water and food to people in line, you know? Uh, no, I mean, again, once again, just they're actually more open with their voting than what you see in Biden's home state. Oh, but I, I was, yeah, you were told. It's a photo op. And he needs stuff like that. January 6th, still big deal. Why? Well, you can rabble-rouse the base. But at the end of the day, people, they're not caring about any of this stuff. They're looking around going, hey, uh, looking at these uh, these numbers here as I go shopping, and uh, this sucks. Are you aware of how much this sucks? Are you, are you not getting that this sucks at all? Are you not picking this up? Your control, you, you, you've got the opportunity in the bully pulpit to try to do some stuff. And you're focusing on God knows what, when the reality is not just the Quinnipiac, Gallup, you name it, Pew. What are people worried about? It's inflation. The most important issue, the Gallup poll, economy, poor leadership, COVID, immigration, down here at number 23, at the bottom of the list, is election reform. People care about their own lives. And when these new inflation numbers came out today, 40-year high, what we see is for a family in Wyoming or across the country, it's going to cost $3,500 more this year just to maintain their standard of living compared to a year ago. Yeah, that's what people are talking about. I'm not talking about January 6th, but it was an insurrection. No, it wasn't. It was a riot. Oh, yeah, but they tried to overthrow. It was not a coup. How many people have been arrested? Oh, 700. How many have been charged with insurrection? Tell me how many people have been charged with insurrection, convicted. If the answer comes back to you is zero, you are correct. Was it idiotic and wrong and misguided? 100%. Was it awful? Absolutely. Was the response from Trump horrible or the lack of it? 100%. We've moved on since then. They're reliving it. Why? Because they got nothing else. You're not going to go out there and go, hey, uh, uh, pretty pumped about the fact that stuff's way more expensive and shelves are empty. Paychecks are not keeping up. Families are struggling. People that are hurt most, of course, seniors, people on a fixed income, young couples trying to get by. And it is the Biden policies. It's the Biden policies that have caused this. Not all of them. Some of them are some supply chain issues. But you can't think to yourself that you print as much money as you have and continue to do so and not think that things are going to go south. You can't think that start stopping everything on a monthly basis based on the Omicron, Delta Cron, Cron Cron is not going to have an effect and continuing to print money. You can't think that that's not going to have issues. It's insane. We gave people money who didn't need money. People spent like they were drunken sailors. Some people didn't and shouldn't have spent the money the way they did, did because it was free money and they thought, well, they'll just give us more. We've got an economy that is, well, for some it's good, for some it's okay, and for a lot it's getting more and more expensive and they're struggling more and more. 
If I was to tell you today I'm going to take an extra $3,600 out of your paycheck for the year, you'd be like, what? Exactly. Exactly. So last year, inflation. Don't worry about it. It's transitory. It's no big deal. This is just some things that are going to happen, but it'll be gone by the end of the first quarter. Then it'll be like, well, probably June, July. Then it was probably by the end of the third quarter, maybe in the early fourth quarter. Then it was hopefully by the end of February, the first quarter, second quarter. Now it's like, eh, it could be here a while. The White House, along with many economists, predict that these elevated prices will remain through the winter but will moderate by year end. Forecasters generally expect elevated inflation, especially for the year over year measure, which includes high inflation from nearly a year ago when the economy was reopening. And the Federal Reserve is also expected to hike interest rates four times this year to keep inflation from undoing the economy. Do you remember? Before we went on our little break here for, you know, the holidays, uh, it was going to be three times. Now they're looking at four times. What? Yeah. People feel that. They're looking around and they're saying prices are going through the roof. Paychecks aren't keeping up. People are pissed. And by the way, shelves. Now, we're fortunate. I live out here in the Southwest, right? So I'm out here in Phoenix. California, Texas, certain parts of the country out here, the blessing is we can we produce a lot, so shelves aren't as bare in some areas. I've got friends across the country. We even talked to producer Phil yesterday who said he went in. Bacon, eggs, stuff like that. Milk. There is nothing. Shelves. I get people sending me stuff every day. They're at Target. They're at Walmart. They're in several other places. And you know what? They're bare. They're bare. And it's not bare like when you go in and you're like, oh, they're switching over from Halloween stuff to Christmas stuff and they're taking it out. And no, it's bare as in there's no pallets in front of it. There's just nothing there. With images of empty store shelves around the country and prices rising, Janetta Jackson of Detroit, a single mom of four, says her grocery bill has soared. Just to get through a week, that's like 300 bucks. Prices just went through the roof. Food prices, meat, poultry, fish, and eggs up 12.5% from a year ago. Shelter, rent up almost 4%. And used car prices up a whopping near 40%. Plus, gasoline prices, which declined slightly between November and December, still up nearly 50% versus a year ago. Yeah. And what do you hear? Now we're hearing the word moderation. Keep that in mind. That's what you're going to hear. Moderation. Most independent forecasters uh, continue to project that we will see moderation in price increases uh, over the course uh, of 2022. Yeah, moderation. Thank you, Mr. Deese. Moderation, moderation. All in moderation. All in moderation. Domino CEO Richard Allison. How do you see things going? We certainly don't see inflation slowing down in our business. You know, we take a look at our, our food basket, you know, as, as you mentioned, you know, we see an 8 to 10% increase in the food basket 2022 relative to 2021. And we also see continued uh, wage inflation across the marketplace as well as we look forward this year. Yeah, wage inflation, because now people are like, well, I'm not going to work. I can't afford to work. So we're going to pay a little people more. Who does that get passed on to? The consumer. Dollars are going a lot less further than they used to. No way. Are you serious? You mean those evil, greedy people that own businesses aren't going to pay people more and then not pass it off to the consumer as their prices continue to rise? No. Elizabeth Warren comes out yesterday and she hammers the groceries, talking about all oh, the grocery stores are evil and bad and, 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 and all of this stuff, not understanding that the grocery industry probably out of all the industries to come after the quote-unquote profit margin is maybe the worst on average about one percent is their profit margin on average but it's just easy to do to demon it's got to be somebody else's fault it's the greedy this it's the, it can't be any of our ideas that aren't working it can't be the fact that we've continually printed money for god knows how long it can't be that it can't be stopping the economy completely then half-ass restarting it then not starting it then stopping it it can't be any of these things no no 
It's got to be the evil this or the evil that. It's, it's ridiculous. Enough. As the president, you have a bully pulpit. The first thing you should do with that bully pulpit is be on the phone with MBS. I don't like him. He's mean. We get it. There's a lot of people out there we don't like. A lot of people out there that you have to deal with on a daily basis. You talk to Xi. I'm going to go out on the limb and say Pooh Bear is probably as bad as MBS. I'm going to go out there and say Pooh Bear probably is. And if you guys know what that is, Winnie the Pooh is not allowed to be in China because they say he resembles Xi, and so they so they say he can't be there. But here is the reality of it. MBS has said over and over again through his surrogates here in the United States, all I want is a phone call from him. It's all I want. And then he's got my number. We'll see what happens. As a bully pulpit that you have, sir, make that phone call. Squeeze a little bit. At least you'll know where you stand. But you're not going to. And instead, you're going to consider, you're going to continue to see people struggle. You're going to continue to go back to the well when it comes to voting rights and January 6th. And you're going to continue to spin yarns of yesteryear and how evil Trump is. Talk about, oh, I've got the, I've, I've, I've created more jobs than any president in history. No, you, sh- you, along with everybody else, was told we had to shut the economy down. So businesses then restarted, and you're like, I created jobs. No, you didn't. Little things like that. People are over it. They think about money at night, and not in a good way. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Hope you were doing well. A lot of stuff to get to today. We're going to squeeze it all in. More on inflation. Racist homework. I I don't even know what to say. Some of this stuff is insane. Uh, Plus more on the voting rights as well. And uh, an interesting new show that's going to be on TLC that is just hmm, is pretty much all I I can say about that. My pillow has my slippers. And right now, 40% off my slippers. They are incredible. You will absolutely love these. You can wear these indoors. You can wear these outdoors. Made right here. Three incredible layers to the sole. The MyPillow Patent and Fill, Impact Gel, and Memory Foam. You're going to love that. It's an incredible cushioning. It's moccasin or slip-on style. Variety of colors. Tons of sizes. Everything's awesome. Two years it took them to develop this. Right now, 40% off. So limited time. Now's your chance to get the my slippers go to mypillow.com click on the radio listener square enter promo code benson or call 800-983-4975 while you're there take advantage of deep discounts across all of the my pillow products including the geese of dream sheets the amazing my pillow mattress topper the my pillow towel sets and everything but right now 40 percent off the my slippers promo code benson or call 800-983-4975 or visit mypillow.com today chad benson show Let the Washington Beltway strangle you. This is where the exhausted majority comes to refuel, realign, and reevaluate. This is Chad Benson. I am live, still the guys I was laughing. A host of male celebrities call for misogyny to be made a hate crime. They virtue signal everywhere. Who cleans it up? Michael Sheen, who normally I like. Gary Neville's a soccer player, who normally I like. Jason Manford. Now, this is the Brit, the Brits, but remember, it's incrementalism. Pops there, pops here. But I'm laughing. Who gets to decide what eh, misogyny gets qualified for what kind of crime? So what if you're like, I don't hate women. I just hate that woman. <laughs> stop very nice. Just stop it. Men must take responsibility for male violence. Sign the letter, please. Uh, I'm just looking. I'm like, it goes, it's ridiculous. When you think about it, like, okay, so who gets the, like, so let's just say you're a petty thief, right? You're not like, you haven't moved up. You're just still kind of like, you're in single A, this baseball term. And you steal something from a woman. Is that misogyny? Because you were able to take it from her? Like a purse? 
Well, it's different. It's different. It's different. No, I mean, I'm just, it goes back to what, I mean, we're at the point now, it's like, uh, who gets to call what a hate crime? Do you hate the whole group? Do you have to sit down and go, well, we have to really talk to this guy, find out if he is a, uh, if he hates everybody, if or maybe it was just this singular person. Maybe they didn't get along. Right? Maybe there was maybe there was other things to it. Is it going to go the other way? Right? If women hate men, there's no way that women could hate men. But let's just say there was. Let's just say there was a way that some women could have a hatred for men. Would that also be a hate crime? I, I don't. Mm. Goodness me. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text said program. Is everybody worried about the Omicron? No, you know, they're not. They're, they're not. And 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 you you can't make people worry about something when on a daily basis you continually change the rules. You continually change the guidelines. Remember when the CDC had all these guidelines for the cruise ships? Now they're like, yeah, we don't have any guidelines anymore. <laughs> Go for three days, pack for two weeks. It's kind of the guidelines we're giving you now. No, it's it, th there's nothing that is, because this thing cannot be stopped. It's the hubris of all these individuals out there who thought they could stop something. Here's the reality of it. Omicron with its extraordinary, unprecedented degree of efficiency of transmissibility will ultimately find just about everybody. Unfortunately, those who are still unvaccinated are going to get the brunt of the severe aspect of this. Omicron will ultimately find just about everybody. Yeah, talk about that. Plus the people are still questioning that weird speech the other day from Biden. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. All right, all right, all right. Biden's poll numbers, spectacular, 33%. Well, it's better than nothing. 33%. That's his favorability rating right now, according to Quinnipiac. 33%. I don't want Biden to fail, but he is... Can we just say that he doesn't seem to be up for the job, right? Let's just be 100% honest. I know people hate that. Oh, Chad, it's because you hate the left or the right. I don't hate anybody. When If Biden fails, it means we're all struggling. If Biden fails, it means we're all feeling. It. And if your goal is to hope the other side fails so you can somehow mythically win something, that's asinine and stupid. But the reality is people aren't waking up in the middle of the night and thinking to themselves, damn, i got to make that car payment, but I also have to pay this. Thanks, Biden. You're doing a hell of a job. They're waking up in the line going, damn it, inflation's through the roof. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's costing me 50 bucks a day to drive back and forth to work, if you can. I'm excited. Rents are going through the roof. Fantastic. And they played this game, right? Our predictor is it's going to be transitory. That's what to worry about. Blah, 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 blah. Do you remember that? Now people are like, I'm I'm not buying it anymore. Even the other day, he goes out and he gives that speech, right? Because he's trying to relive January 6th as if this, you know, this is a day that too will live in infamy. It isn't a day that lives in infamy for most people. Most people don't care. They thought what happened was horrible. They also thought what happened in the summer with people rioting in the streets everywhere and burning down places and uh, of employment was horrible. 
But at the end of the day, they're worried about themselves. Sounds selfish, but that's just life, self-preservation. Now he wants to get rid of the filibuster. Got to get rid of that filibuster, right? Got to get rid of it. Today, I'm making it clear, to protect our democracy, I support changing the Senate rules. Whichever way they need to be changed to prevent a minority of senators from blocking action on voting rights. I believe that the threat to our democracy is so grave that we must find a way to pass these voting rights bills. Let the majority prevail. And if that bare minimum is blocked, we have no option but to change the Senate rules, including getting rid of the filibuster for this. So just to let you know, uh, it's not a minority of senators. See, when you have two senators that have jumped over to the other side, if you will. It's not a minority. That's the majority. If they were to kill the filibuster, then it's just basically a six-year Congress term. You're not senators anymore. Right? You, 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 you've got a party of one as the president, so you're always going to be the, the the majority for whatever it is that you choose, unless, of course, Biden. I don't know what's going on there. On the other side, it only has to be a majority in the House. The Senate is two-thirds majority. You need 60 votes. Why? Because they wanted a way to make sure that this wasn't going to be a situation where one party would overrun the other. They wanted to give the minority party an opportunity to have a little fight back. And this is it. And if you change that rule, it is going to be an absolute nightmare of undoing, yelling at each other, continually undoing, changing things on a whim. And just to let you know, from what my sources say, and I have a couple people who are senators that I talk to, uh, they said... It could be as high as six if they really tried to push something through and they thought it was going to be a real vote where this could happen. That you might see another four Democrats, maybe more go, nah, this can't happen. This can't. Nor should it. But they're still talking about the insanity of 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 the voter suppression and 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 all of these things. I go back to this, right? So here's a perfect example of Tom Barrasso. This is another poll. Quinnipiac had one poll. This is Tom Brasso. Senator, where? Wyoming. Yeah, he's a Republican, but he's looking at what's on the minds of everyday people. The most important issue, the Gallup poll. Economy, poor leadership, COVID, immigration, down here at number 23. At the bottom of the list is election reform. People care about their own lives. And when these new inflation numbers came out today, 40-year high, What we see is for a family in Wyoming or across the country, it's going to cost $3,500 more this year just to maintain their standard of living compared to a year ago. Yeah, that's what it's about. When you hear people say it's costing me two, three hundred bucks a week for to feed my family with groceries and a family of four rents are going up, 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 up. They're feeling it every single place. That's what it is and they're not buying that eh, it's going to go away anytime soon the fed reserve and to some degree the u.s government are predicting that this will continue throughout the rest of this year now where we might start to see the big dramatic increases taper off is once we start to get to the spring and summer because the comparisons will be to last year and people will probably remember that that prices started to really climb in the spring and summer of last year back then the Fed Reserve and to some extent the administration predicted it would be transitory but now here we are it's been almost a year not transitory now they're going to raise rates potentially four times this year to try to slow down inflation people are frustrated people are you can say it's 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 the you know uh all about the supply chain some of that is true and not all of this is Biden's fault Let's let's be real. Not all the money printed was under Biden. We had this rush last year with the Delta before the Delta with the Alpha to shut everything down, including schools, to send people home, 
Those that could work from home did. Those that didn't, just like those who could work from home, all got money. We have all of these. I mean, it, it, it's not it's not all his fault, but you're in a position where as a leader, you can do what? You could push forward and use that bully pulpit in certain situations, in particular with fuel and energy prices, to try to influence places like OPEC to open up a bit more, especially for selling you weapons. If somebody says, if I say, hey, uh, did you guys talk to such and such? Yeah. Did you tell them we need this done? Yeah. What'd they say? They said, why didn't you ask? You've got the number. If you need it done, give them a call. To me, it would be, okay, if I give you a call and you're asking other people to tell me to give you a call, that there is a chance to get some stuff done. People are over it. I'm over it. Yesterday, I didn't even fill my car up. Because my car was like, I had like almost, I think it was like, you know, a third of a, of a, gal, uh, a tank of gas. And I'm just like, you know, I, I don't want to, I just rather do it now. It was like $52. I thought to myself, my God. And I fill up because I drive so much. I fill up probably two, three times a week now. And it's nuts the amount of money I'm spending on gas. I feel it. Everybody does. And all of that trickles down. So when you're out there uniting the country by saying, I will defend the right to vote, our democracy against all enemies, by a simple majority. I will not flinch. I will defend the right to vote, our democracy against all enemies, foreign and, yes, domestic. So I ask every elected official in America, how do you want to be remembered? Do you want to be on the side of Dr. King or George Wallace? Do you want to be on the side of John Lewis or Bull Connor? Do you want to be on the side of Abraham Lincoln or Jefferson Davis? Yeah, when you go in, and, and, and so you compare three of the worst humans that we have had in our country, Democrats, uh, Jefferson Davis, right? So he's just like, oh, we're going to keep all of the slavery stuff and we're going to secede. Okay, fantastic. Uh, George Wallace, segregation forever, baby. And, of course, Bull Connor, if you don't know who he is, he was uh, a Democratic politician who became a sheriff who was essentially the guy that sick the dogs, that used the tear gas, that intimidated and beat, that hid the Ku Klux Klan from any kind of repercussions. He was that small town sheriff that was the thing of nightmares. And you're comparing people to that if you don't want them to show an ID. Hey, Phil, today, is it today or is it yesterday? I don't know. Is it is in D.C. now you have to show an I.D. to get into most stores along with your vaccine card? I'm pretty sure, yeah, most things uh, in D.C. I think that happened a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's well, it's a shame because black people can't get into stores now because they're, you know, because they can't find an I.D. Enough. That's not uniting. People want to hear from you, Mr. President. What are you going to do? I've always said, and, and, and this has been the frustration here with the Republican governor in this state that I'm in, is people want to know you're there. People want to know that you're feeling the pain or that you're at least trying to work on it. People want to know that you're uh, a part or at least trying to play a part of a solution. Not sending Jen Psaki out to give some sort of spin. That's what people want to feel like is going on you came in and you were going to be the great uniter and instead you've been a buffoon and you've divided as much as the last guy and the last guy had massive help because the media loved the fact that he was dividing and they played the game as his he so much of what he did was self-inflicted but the media helped you have the media on your side And we hear very little about anything. 
outside of you pushing January 6th continuously or trying to sort this this nightmare of of this horrible pandemic of which we made something that was awful 10 times worse and under your leadership more people have died even though we've had the vaccine it's because of the unvaccinated whatever but more people have died and you finally have had to admit to yourself eh, you're not going to get rid of this thing not the way that you want We are selfish when it comes to paying for our life, as we all should be. That's what people are worried about, Mr. President. They're not sitting around reliving January 6th or worried about voting rights the way that you are, because when everything's kind of spelled out in the majority of these places, uh, they weren't too dissimilar to 2016 when people voted. Or before. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It's just amazing that people are that tone deaf. But I understand it. If you've got a 33% approval rating and inflation is setting records and everything that you've tried to do and said about inflation has been wrong, going out in front of people would probably be a tough thing to do. But that's where a leader comes out and addresses it head on. That's where that happens. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show. Your Twitter, your getter, and everything else. All right, check it out. It's called Longevity. 90 for life. 90 essential nutrients. 90 essential nutrients. 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, powerful blend of essential fatty acids, And it took them years and years and decades, Dr. Wallach, to put this thing together. Why? Well, because 76% of adults don't meet the fruit intake we need on a daily basis, Mr. Benson. 87% do not meet the vegetable intake they need, me. So what do we do? We can do fat, sugar, carbohydrates, everything through the roof. This is where Longevity's 90 for Life comes in, and it is incredible. It's a supplement. I take it every day. It gives me tons of energy. I feel so much better. And really, that's kind of what it's all about. And if we've learned anything for this pandemic, energy, feeling better, getting healthier matters. And 94 Life and Longevity has got it for you. Go to chadbensonhealth.com right now. Kickstart true wellness and experience amazing products for yourself. And they've got some incredible, incredible stuff from weight loss to getting fit to getting you those essential nutrients, chadbensonhealth.com, or call 855-321-HEALTH, 855-321-HEALTH, or chadbensonhealth.com. Chad Benson Show. You go, boy. This isn't about right or left. This is just about right and wrong. Right you are, Chad. The Chad Benson Show. Well, I've lost a lot of people in the last few days. Bob Saget last week. I mean, you start looking and, and going through and seeing all of the people that we've lost recently. Lost a, eh, another one yesterday. Uh, and that voice. That that voice and the last name, Ronnie Spector, not to be confused with her crazy husband, Phil, or ex-husband, but uh, the Ronettes, man, the voice. Ronnie Spector's voice, instantly recognizable on hits including Be My Baby. Born Veronica Bennett, she was the leader of the 60s girl group, the Ronettes, busting out five top 40 singles. Toured with the Rolling Stones and the Beatles, Spectre marrying music super producer Phil Spectre, a marriage she described as abusive. The Ronettes made it into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2007. Ronnie Spectre's family says she died after a brief battle with cancer. She was 78. <sighs> 78. I, and it's funny because, you know, it be my baby, but, you know, she had a, a resurgence. Later on, with Eddie Money, you know, take me home tonight. Ah, oh, that was a great song. It was, it's another one. 
You know, it's not they're no longer coming in threes. They're coming in bunches now. And I'm waiting for it. You know, she got the booster. <laughs> no, she did. She got the booster. She got the booster. I don't, I don't know if she did or didn't. Does it really matter? That's where people are going to go with it, though. There, I already saw that flying around. You know that uh, Betty White, Betty White had a stroke. So we're finding out. Still don't know what happened with Bob Saget. Bob Saget had some health issues outside of some other things. Uh, but, you know, it probably was a heart attack. Right? And, the, and, you, and you start, you know, but it, there, there's rumors everywhere, kids. There's rumors, rumors, and rumors. Because rumors are more fun. Rumors are more fun, apparently. The problem is when rumors become reality to some people, that's the scary part. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show. Is your Twitter, your Instagram, your Getter. I don't know what else is out there. God only knows. I'm all over the place. So if you'd like to find me, I'm easy to reach and it comes directly to me. This is the aforementioned Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Oh, the economy's stupid. Shouldn't be that hard. What are people worried about? Well, they worry about paying their bills. Yeah, but why do they worry about paying their bills? Because they don't want to be homeless. You're being silly, Chad. How can that be? Nobody cares about that. Everybody cares about that. Everybody does. Unemployment. It's always all over the place anymore. And I don't even know what to believe, right? Claims up, claims down, new numbers come out. You got inflation again through the roof. But then you look at, okay, well, let's look at all of the factors about employment, unemployment, consumer confidence, et cetera, et cetera. 230,000 Americans sought jobless aid last week, the highest level since mid-November. Companies have been holding on to workers and posting millions of openings, but the weekly jobless claims may be a sign the Omicron variant is impacting the labor market. So far, that impact may be limited since the number of Americans overall receiving unemployment benefits is down. Yeah. But again, I don't, you know, first of all, those numbers are always a hot mess. For those of you who know, when people say, oh, it's a weird 3% unemployment, probably at 5 Because the minute you don't look for a job, in a sense where, so you could be, I'm on unemployment, right, like some people did, and, and they're looking for jobs, and then unemployment runs out, they no longer count. Doesn't mean they got employment. It's just a, they ran out of unemployment, so they don't want to count. So that was always a misleading thing. I don't know at any more, though, how to count half this stuff because it's so weird. How much of it's real? How much of it's not? How much of it's, oh, we've had to close this down? And how much of it is like, oh, you know what? It's, uh, 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 I, I was on, a, I had a side gig, but now I'm applying for unemployment. Then you've got the the nightmare of inflation continuing to go erp, 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 erp. With images of empty store shelves around the country and prices rising, Janetta Jackson of Detroit, a single mom of four, says her grocery bill has soared. Just to get through a week, that's like 300 bucks. Prices just went through the roof. Food prices, meat, poultry, fish, and eggs up 12.5% from a year ago. Shelter, rent up almost 4%, and used car prices up a whopping near 40%. Plus, gasoline prices, which declined slightly between November and December, still up nearly 50% versus a year ago. Yeah, absolutely. Not a shocker frustrating for a lot of people they're trying to get on with their life and what do we hear about all day omicron shortages you know coronavirus those are all things that are real but at some point you have to cut people loose and say look guys you're gonna have to deal with this 
in a way where you can feel as comfortable as possible, but knowing that there is no such thing as a zero risk. He was reading yesterday, you know, Xi, who is the president of uh, the general ruler of the Communist Party, Party slash China, uh, he, you know, he still has a zero COVID policy. And, you know, that's the great, you're not getting to zero in any real way. And this thing now, Omicron spreads all over the place. And, and it's, People are are done. And this is where being a leader, when you hear inflation's through the roof and you're out there and you're telling everybody, hey, if you don't vote for, for you know, for uh, and you're against voter ID and you don't vote to get rid of the filibuster, you are essentially a Klansman and uh, and an evil person uh, because that's what people are, are worried about. And that's not the average person is not. Average person is not worried about that. Latest Gallup poll, it's in the 20s. What are people caring about? <laughs> the economy, stupid. The economy. So as the president, this is where you come out and as a leader and you address the people. And he said, look, it sucks. We thought it, it our projections were it was going to be transitory. It was going to be here for a few months. And part of it was the supply chain. I can't blame everything on the supply chain because we don't do some of that stuff here. And that was years coming. But some of it is is based on the energy prices. Yeah, some of my policies may be playing a little part in that. But I also know there are things I can do with the bully pulpit that I'm going to have to start doing. You come out and you address the people. And you go, okay, we overprinted. And just just be honest. We overprinted money. And if you don't think they did, look at the coffers. The bank deposits, if you will, of your state's finances. California's got so much money, they're like, we should just give health care to everybody, regardless of their immigration status. Which, is, by the way, is a super fine idea. But everybody's flush with cash, cash that we printed that has now devalued your earnings in dollars. That's what people are worried about. That's what people are staying up at night thinking about. That's what families are, 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 are wrestling with day to day. The most important issue, the Gallup poll, economy, poor leadership, COVID, immigration, down here at number 23, at the bottom of the list, is election reform. People care about their own lives. And when these new inflation numbers came out today, 40-year high, what we see is for a family in Wyoming or across the country, it's going to cost $3,500 more this year just to maintain their standard of living compared to a year ago. So think about that. If I told you today you got to take a pay cut of 3500 bucks, would that hit you? You know it would. You absolutely do. You heard that lady saying my grocery bills are $300 a week. 300 bucks a week. That's a, oh. Oh, yeah. So that'd be $300 a month for somebody. So you're taking you're taking essentially almost 100 bucks a week from somebody. And if you're at that level where, you know, you're just getting by and, and this has really put a strain on you, pretty much everybody, that's what people want you to come and address, Mr. President. Just come out and address it. Sitting there talking about voting rights is not what people are thinking about. They're not thinking about January 6th. They're not. They're thinking, okay, now we got Omicron. What is this going to do? To my life now. How is this going to upend my life? Now. How is this going to impact my life? Are you closing schools again? Some cities have. Some states getting close. Are you going to shut some businesses? Are you going to try to, you know, uh, continue to push mandates in certain areas? Or are, are my local leaders going to start cracking down more and asking for vaccine passports? Those are the things that people are thinking about because of the day-to-day -day effect on their lives. And if you're a leader, you come out and you say, 
you know, which which they never will, because very few do. Just be honest with the people. Just be honest. But you can't. You've got a legacy media that has protected him over and over again and continues to do so. Now you're hearing they're underreporting some of the numbers. Now you're getting different kind of things. Well, people are in the hospital now. Remember last year, people were in the hospital. And it was all the coronavirus. This year, it's like, yeah, people are in the hospital. But a vast majority of them in some places are there because they tested positive for the coronavirus while they were there. But they got into a car accident and -and so-and-so broke his leg. He's not in the hospital with COVID. He's in the hospital and he has COVID. Oh. It's like always moving the goalpost. Frustration. And that's the other part of leadership. You've got a guy that's leading you and Dr. Fauci and, and, and you know, and Dr. Walensky uh, over there, the director at the CDC, who nobody listens to anymore. She will come out and say something five minutes la- later. Somebody's contradicting that. He'll come out and say something. And 10 minutes later, people don't even know he said it. Because people are like, we're not paying attention to that guy anymore. We've stopped paying attention to him. We've stopped. He's become abrasive. He has become uh, adversarial. He has played the blame game for too long. And he has now become the face of, of I think, what a lot of people look at as failure. I can't blame it all on him, but he knows a lot more about what took place, how this thing got out. Then rather than come and say, look, we had to, we have we have to make changes, and that's what we're doing. We appreciate the work. We're making changes. We've got to get this thing back on track. Inflation is too damn high. We need to figure out what we can do here and what I can do from my bully pulpit to start to right the ship. And to be also honest with the American people, it's endemic, not pandemic. I think somebody's waiting for somebody to ring a bell and say, all right, now we can call it endemic. Now we can call it this this endemic thing rather than pandemic, which you, just taking that word off, I think, in some... It's just time. But as a leader, you need to step out and do that. And instead, you're too busy demonizing people over not voting for your voting rights bill that would essentially give you the opportunity to take away states' rights when it comes to voting, federalize it, draw up your own districts. No. No. Enough. Enough. If you're a leader, come and lead. If not, get out of the way and let some big adults that get it try to lead. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from all of you. That's why you've got a 33. That's why. And you aren't uniting the country. You're dividing it as much as the last guy. And the last guy had help. Not only was he a pain in his own ass, the media was a pain in his ass. Together, they were a, they were a hot mess. You've got people protecting you, and you're still jacking a pooch. I'm telling you what, my goodness, calibrate. Unhealthy is not good. Sometimes unhealthy is one of those things over time you look up and you're like, what's going on? You try to lose weight, right? And you do stuff and like, oh, my goodness me, it's not working. Or you lose some and you gain it back. And part of that is because it's your metabolic system. What happens is, is, is you have gotten comfortable at a certain place with your body. Your body's learned to live at that comfort. And with that, it wants to stay there. So you need a metabolic reset, and that's where Calibrate comes in. Calibrate works because it combines doctor-prescribed FDA medication paired with lifestyle changes that are easy, that fits into anybody's lifestyle, and it improves your metabolic health. 14% on average is what Calibrate's earliest members, some 20-plus percent in their body fat loss, comparatively to the 10% average seen in clinical trials. It combines GLP-1 medication and coaching, you're going to get one-on-one video coaching, in-app tracking, community members like you and me and everybody. We all sit down and talk, and we can cheer each other on. But on top of that, you get a video doctor visit. And, again, it fits into anybody's lifestyle, and it's easier 
than you think. Your weight doesn't reflect your willpower. Get back in control with Calibrate. 50 bucks off, one-year metabolic reset when you use, ready, promo code CHAD. Simple as that at joincalibrate.com. Promo code CHAD at joincalibrate.com. Promo code CHAD. Joincalibrate.com. Chad Benson Show. Irreverence? Um, like, yeah. So what? It's the Chad Benson Show. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Let's find out what's trending. Trendy, 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 trendy. Start with Google. Ronnie Spector. Ronnie Spector, of course, of the Ronettes fame. Ultimate girl group icon. Some people are calling her has passed away. 78 years young. Married to Phil Spector. Apparently the relationship was uh, not good. <laughs> Read an article yesterday. I don't know if you've ever seen this, Phil. You would have loved this about, you know, he produced the end of the century, the Ramones. The Ramones said he was nuts, and he would have a gun with him all the time and, like, a holster, and he made him play in, like, his Fourier. <laughs> Just insane, dude. Jason Momoa and Lisa Bonet have announced they've split. Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox are engaged. That's trending on Google. Uh, it's always nice to see uh, when... Uh, when good things happen to bad people. <laughs> That's not very nice. She left her husband to be with Machine Gun Kelly, and now they're engaged. Congratulations. Again, Chad, it's not very nice. It's not. It's not. Just kidding. I'm sure they're wonderful people. Asteroids Earth. NASA calls the kilometer-wide asteroid heading close to Earth. Potentially hazardous. We'll talk about that. Head on over to Twitter. Glenn Beck says he has coronavirus and it's moves to his lungs, but he's going to be fine. Will he? I think he'll be okay. Maybe he won't. I'm sure he's going to be fine. Disney cast a male lead in the live action Snow White, but he's not playing the prince. No, he's going to be the huntsman. I'm like, didn't they just do this? Wasn't there one of these with the... Uh, Oh, God, what's her name? I just forget her name. She was in the Twilight movies. She's never happy. And uh, Hemsworth. I thought there was one of these already. I bet he's, like, not going to be a regular. Like, he'll be all, no, you lead. And no, uh, you, you're the hunter. I'll, I'll be the queen. <laughs> you're a jerk. COVID-19 has not yet become endemic. The woo, who, who warns us. How is that possible? Yeah, yeah, because that's them. The Fed says they're going to rate rates four times this year. And more about that asteroid that's coming. The asteroid is coming. What does it mean? Is it because of climate change? There's a movie out uh, called Don't Look Up. And the whole thing, it's, a, it's an allegory for climate change. It's about a comet. Is, is a comet now considered climate change? Is that, is, are we going this way now? Where it's like, oh, yeah, we're going to consider that climate change. We'll talk about that. Plus racist homework. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Not Omicron or Delta. It's 
It's not kung flu. Oh, shit. I don't... Something else, right? It's the evil Republicans and Trump. He's a bad person. Okay. If, if, if it's not any of those, now we've got to worry about an asteroid? An asteroid? It's going to come close. NASA's like, eh, it's a little closer than maybe we thought. Really? What could we do to stop it just in case? And is it because of the climate? Is the comet really going to strike the Earth and kill us all? There's a 100% chance that we're all going to die! This is the scenario presented in the dark comedy movie Don't Look Up, which chronicles what happens after scientists discover a life-ending comet that will strike the Earth in about six months. The film is an allegory of the climate crisis and how key players, like our government officials and the media, are failing to respond to it. We discovered a very large comet. Oh, good for you. It's headed directly towards Earth. (laughs) Oh, this is an allegory of uh, climate change, you know? What would scientists do if we discovered a threatening near-Earth object? One method NASA... Well, the first thing I think uh, they would do is they would absolutely go to the UN and say, what could we do that all of us here could agree on and we'll let uh, Cameroon take the lead? (laughs) It's not very... You're being beat again. I'm just saying. I mean, we all know what we do. All of us know what we would do. Don't we? Come on, really? You know what you do. Let's see what they would do. One method NASA is researching is a gravity tractor, an object that would fly alongside the asteroid or comet to change its orbit, guiding it away from the Earth. Another method, kinetic impaction, involves launching a high-speed object into an asteroid or comet with the hope that the impact shifts its orbit away from the Earth. Finally, nuclear explosives are not off the table, but they are considered a last resort. Or I call Harry Stamper, who is the greatest deep sea driller in the history of the world. And he has an eerie look about him, almost like Bruce Willis. And he assembles a team and they fly up there and he drills into the to to the to the big rock. And then they blow it up. God. The NASA says there's no known threats of a hazardous asteroid hitting the Earth in the next 100 years or more. Do you know how many the world is ending meetings we've had over the last two years? You really don't need to worry about an asteroid or a comet hitting the Earth and destroying all life. So that brings us back to don't look up as a metaphor for a society's response to the climate crisis. One thing is certain, the climate crisis is already having devastating effects and we need to be doing more about it. Mm. So that's what it is. (laughs) Climate crisis. It's having devastating effects. Look, we got to do better. I don't think anybody disagrees with that. I have yet to find a Republican who goes, you know, we need to really crap more on on society and do no, no, I've yet I've yet to meet that. Are there scumbags out there that do stuff? Of course. Are there municipalities and communities out there that do things because that's the way they've always done things? Yeah. Are there people that are ill informed? And by that I mean they're they're they don't know any better. They don't. In certain parts of the globe. Not just talking about here, I'm talking about certain parts of the globe. Yes. But there's no crisis anywhere. You can go and look. It's like even in the the insanity of the UN, nowhere in there is an an extinct level event. No place in there is that. But when you can use fear, when you can use fear to grab power, you do it. When you can use fear to strengthen yourself and to enrich yourself, you do it. As bad as Biden is, the world's not coming to end because of Biden is. It's not. As much of a threat as China is, China's not taking over the world anytime soon. But you use fear. Doesn't mean we don't pay attention to stuff. We absolutely do. We don't let it get to that point 100%. So Biden was doing the other day, right? Biden's out there talking about all this stuff, you know, giving that big speech, talking about if you don't do this, oh, my God, it's going to be 
January 6th all over again. Oh, and then everybody, we're going to be going back to the Jim Crow era, and you guys are evil. I will defend the right to vote, our democracy against all enemies, by a simple majority. I will not flinch. I will defend the right to vote, our democracy against all enemies, foreign and, yes, domestic. So I ask every elected official in America, how do you want to be remembered? Do you want to be the side, on the side of Dr. King or George Wallace? Do you want to be on the side of John Lewis or Bull Connor? Do you want to be on the side of Abraham Lincoln or Jefferson Davis? So you go out and you tell everybody that this is basically, it's Jim Crow era, right? Whoopi Goldberg the other day, she basically said, so this is going to be like pre-emancipation? <laughs> really, Whoopi? You're on television. You're worth... Hundred two two hundred million dollars. Have you ever not voted? Has you ever gone somewhere and they're like, "Don't let her vote." No. No, it's like it's it's they use fear. Both sides use fear because fear is so much easier than trying to persuade people with a better argument because you're asking people to think. You're asking people to go, hmm, hmm. And the whole thought process and the way that he's come out there and, 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 and said, essentially, if you believe in any of these things, should be like voter ID and that, you know, maybe not, you know, uh, asking somebody for ID is not racist. Or uh, if you're going to vote by mail, that you have to write your, your, your number down. I mean, those things are in, that's just you, you might as well be lighting crosses in front of churches. Is, is the way he talks about it. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Matt Walsh, uh, interesting, Daily Wire, and he poses something interesting. We've, we've touched on it before with a lot of different things. Whenever I hear Democrats panicking over the attack on voting rights, it hits me right in the heart. It shakes me to the core, gets my hopes up because I very much wish that there was an attack on voting rights. I think universal voting rights is one of the worst ideas this country has ever had. There are few things more worthy of coming under attack than universal voting rights. Voting ought to be a privilege reserved for those who are most competent and qualified. It's not a natural right. God did not imbue us all with some sort of sacred entitlement to participate in our national elections. It's interesting. Should you take a test, right? Should you understand the at least the, the, the three three branches of government? Should should there be a a, a levy? You take a test for a lot of things, right? Stuff that's in our constitution, by the way. Constitution now nowadays, pretty much a lot of different places across the country could take a test to 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 you know a safety test in several states to get guns to re- should oh Chad that's I'm I'm saying parenting we've always talked about it. Should there be a test to be a parent? Now, we're not giving birth the way that we used to, so we could probably use all the help we can get, but it is interesting. So if it's not a natural right, then it's a privilege that we grant, and it would be wise to consider a person's basic qualifications before granting it. We are under no moral obligation to allow hordes of stupid, bewildered, clueless zombies to flood the voting booth and cast their ballots in a state of ignorance and confusion, helping to steer this giant ship of a country right into one iceberg after another. That's interesting. No, I think you have the right to vote. I there's no doubt about that. But it is an interesting thing. You should think you should have at least some common sense. And let's be let's be a hundred percent honest. We don't want to. There's a lot of people you probably know who you're thinking to yourself, man, that guy votes. She votes. There's a lot of people out there that 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 they're not stupid. Maybe some of them are. Let's not let's not ever undercount the stupid. But that that vote. Ill informed, don't care. Look, if you don't care, I'd rather you not vote. Even if you were going to vote the way that I was going to vote. If you just have no idea what the hell you're voting for. It's not a test like in school. Like if you don't do this, you're going to fail. But th- there have always been questions, you know. It's, it's, I thought it was a very interesting thing, and we've discussed it on several occasions here, just like with parenting. You know, what, we've, everybody who's a parent. At least the decent parents said, man, there should be a test <laughs> to be a parent. <laughs> yeah. Like if you, yeah, if you can't keep a plan alive, everybody's like, I can't keep a plan alive. How am going to keep a child alive? Well, I mean, come on. That's, 
But still, still, there there should be some qualifications, you would think. I don't think that's very nice. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Uh, we'll get to it in a second. It is the... Of all of the homework assignments, eh, this was a pretty bad homework assignment. Of all of them, this was not a good one. This was, as they would say, no bueno. Talk about that. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. My dog Doodle takes it every single night, sprinkle on top of his food. He's bouncy. He's happy. He's healthy. Vitamins, minerals, probiotics, omega-3, 6, 9, all these incredible things right there in this supplement that goes on top of his food. He loves the taste. I love the fact that he's healthy and happy. His energy level's up. His hips don't hurt. He's in the best place he has been in years. And it's all because of K9 Vitasmart from Rough Greens. Right now, they want you to try it before you buy it. It's not going to cost you anything outside of shipping. They're going to send you a bag absolutely free. You put it to the test. If you like it, you're going to be like, we need this for our dogs. If you don't, you're out shipping. Nothing else. That's a win. How do you get it? RUFFgreens.com slash Chad. Free bag for you. Roughgreens.com slash Chad. Call 833-MY-DOG-77. 833-MY-DOG-77. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show. Set Chad straight. Text the show, 323-538-2423. That's 323-538-CHAD. Someone has to do it. Might as well be you. The Chad Benson Show. So imagine this, if you will. You get a homework assignment in Spanish. Take it home, and you do it, and you look up, and you say to yourself, I speak some Spanish. Maybe somebody at the house does. And I don't think this is right. Outrage on social media. Outrage. The homework assignment was for a Spanish class. It asked students to write, and I quote. By the way, I just want to say, if you listen to this guy, and we'll start it closer to the beginning again. He seems like they he was maybe hanging out, and he's like, oh, you want me to come back and do the show? All right, all right, here I come. Outrage on social media. The homework assignment was for a Spanish class. It asked Spanish. students to write, and I quote, you are Mexican and ugly. And then, quote, you are pretty and American. That's, first of all, that's not good. And that may not even be true. There's a lot of people who are Americans who are not pretty. And there's a lot of people who are of Mexican origin who are stunning. I think we know that. I think we absolutely do. There's more to it. We continue. During tonight's school board meeting, Williamsville Superintendent Dr. Darren Brown Hall called the assignment, quote, unacceptable. Our goal as a district is to create an intentionally welcoming learning environment. An intentionally welcoming. Because the last time we did it was totally unintentional, and then people were really welcome. We're like, well, I didn't go. That went really well, but next time, let's, let's, let's have an intentional welcoming environment, guys. Celebrating our community and its diversity. Ah, good. Diversity. you got to get diver diversity. Diversity is one of those key words. You've got to get in it. Equity, diversity. These are things you have to be, those are key, those are key words. Equity, diversity, cha-ching, cha-ching. Those are sales words. So like when you're selling something in life, you're always looking for buying signals. And usually those come from people when, you're, you, you, when you've hit some sort of keyword, right? So equity, diversity, welcoming. Oh, man, I love that. This assignment fails to meet our standards and will be dealt with appropriately. The superintendent says the assignment was created by the teacher. He says the district will make sure this doesn't happen again. The superintendent. Today, vaccines and antivirals are helping fight the pandemic because. Oh, sorry about that. I was pushing stuff. The superintendent says that this is not a good thing. But your faces. So you are Mexican and ugly. Some of the other stuff was like, really like, where is the door? Or like, go through the door. It was just like, what? What the hell is wrong? 
Now you ask yourself the question, did this person do that on purpose, right? Or was this one of those things where Grandma Gums had no idea and just copied something and sent it out? Some of the other stuff, right? We are serious students. <laughs> she is from San Jose, Costa Rica. You guys are tall and blonde. The classes in school are boring. The girls are intelligent. <laughs> How tall is my dentist? Oh, goodness me. That is just awful. Yeah, don't do that, kids. I'm just letting you guys know. That is not a win right there. We know that. We worry about critical race theory. How about just straight racism? Chad, that is not equitable. Listen for those things. You're going to hear that more and more in, you know, we joke around here like we have our, you know, Woke Wednesday and the pronouns and stuff. The reality is incrementalism, you know, where like little things are happening at a time and slowly but surely closer and closer and closer. You feel that. Like how many times is you, at your work in the last couple of days have, you know, or weeks or months have you heard, we're going to be more inclusive. We're going to champion diversity. We're going to do X, Y, and, and and you're just like, do you mean that? It's like, do you really, is that, is that, is that something that's real or are you pushing something? Because I feel like you're pushing something. And when I hear you're being intentional, well, what were you before? When you want to see what it's like to have people who really are, who have good bonds, it's all organic. It's all organic. That's what it should be. That's the way it should be. But it's not. So listen for those key keywords. Listen for the keyword. Diversity, equity, inclusion. Oh, my Lord. Speaking of it should be organic. So in China, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, they don't date like we do. Uh, this lady had set up five dates in a city, and she had taken the train there. And one of the dates said, hey, why don't you come to my house, and I'm going to show you that I can cook. And she thought this will be good because she was, you know, dating for serious. Uh, she went there, and she's still there, not because anything bad happened, but because there is a lockdown. So she is actually chronicling some of this and let me just say she's called the guy wooden and boring and saying that cooking is okay uh yeah boy how exciting would that be 323-538-2423 at chad benson show is your twitter we're very inclusive here chad benson show this is the chad benson show Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Watch out for Omicron. While it's not dangerous like the others, you still have to watch out for because it's probably more dangerous. Probably the most stunning takeaway from that study is out of the 50 plus thousand cases of Omicron, not a single one of them required mechanical ventilation. But the caseload continues but. to be enormous. 750,000 cases a day, that's what the U.S. is averaging. But a sliver of good news, both Boston and New York reporting a sharp reduction in new cases of COVID. Yeah, the U.K. said today, hey, we're done. We've hit the peak, it's turning around. And I go back to the thing I've talked about over and over again. Statistic porn. Statistic porn. What's that? You look and say, where do we report the statistics? Well, for Trump, if he was in office today, it's, oh, 900,000 cases compared to a year last year, 700,000. But if it's Biden, it's like, well, we only had 2,700 deaths. Some of those may not be strictly from COVID. And while well, this time last year, we had 440 
I mean, we had 4,400 deaths. So statistics can be swayed in ways that I don't think people understand. And I always joke about statistic porn and people like, "Ah." but when you start to show, and one of the perfect examples is if there's 10 P let's just say 10 kids are in a hospital, not a hundred thousand deathly ill SCOTUS Sotomayor. Uh, She said that a good good majority are on ventilators or whatever she said. It's not even close to being true. Not even close. So you, you, what you do with statistic porn is you're able to take and manufacture data in a way that helps with whatever it is you're selling, right? And you're like, how? But 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 how can you do those kind of things? Because people are going to lightly brush over the news, right? They're not going to dig into any stories. We don't have time for that because we're busy trying to live. We're busy trying to, 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 to live. And so you take the, the whatever statistic you have and you, you take it and you twist it a little bit here, twist it a little bit there, or only tell portion of the story. The reality is we're never going to know how many people ever caught this thing. I'm assuming by the, you know, there is no end to it. To you. There is no end. But by the time we get to a point where we decide that this thing's endemic, a majority of Americans, probably close to 250, would probably have caught it in some fashion. You go and look at inflation. They're excited because, well, year over year inflation was up, but comparatively to, you know, from December of of this past year to the year before, it was kind of, you know, it was pretty much even or down a little bit. You find the part that fits the thing and that's how you do it. You have 50,000 people that you've run research on, and that was Kaiser Permanente. So they go and they do this big study. And out of those 50,000 people that you studied, not a singular one of them was on a ventilator. Oh. That's right. Not a singular one was on a ventilator. That's that's good. Why? Well, because this that spreads super easy. As I try to explain to my friends out there, it's like, ah, it's not really it's 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 a cold. Yeah, for a majority of people, even unvaccinated or somewhat healthy, it's somewhat of a cold because it doesn't get into your lungs. And in fact, Dr. Walensky, I she probably shouldn't have done this, but yesterday she went out and she says, and chances are the deaths that we're seeing, a majority of them are coming from the Delta, not uh Omicron. You're like, oh, 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 indeed. But that's what you can do with data. Data is 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 meant to be played with because where you and I might look at something like and we go, oh, here's X, Y and Z. number. OK, is that everything? Well, no, I'm only showing you this part. Most people just go mm. and they move on. Some people don't have all the data. But they move on. Case in point, today's the day that's Thursday. What happens on Thursday? We get the jobs numbers. Jobs, 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 jobs. Let me tell you how all administrations play with numbers. 230,000 Americans sought jobless aid last week, the highest level since mid-November. Companies have been holding on to workers and posting millions of openings, but the weekly jobless claims may be a sign the Omicron variant is impacting the labor market. So far, that impact may be limited since the number of Americans overall receiving unemployment benefits is down. How do they play that game? You know, it's like Biden comes out and he says, ah, I've created more jobs in the history of of job creation in the history of forever and a day. Reagan was the only president who ever created a million jobs in one month. A lot of that was the fact that there was the big strike, fired everybody who was in air traffic control, everybody got hired back. That was a good portion of it. When you tell everybody you can't work and then they have to stay home and then they're essentially un- they're getting unemployment as well as everything else, now they have to go back to work. You haven't created jobs. You've essentially set a fire to a house and then put it out and then said, look at me, I'm a hero. And unemployment works in a weird way, too. If you're on unemployment, you're officially unemployed. If your unemployment runs out and you don't have a job, you just don't count anymore. Data can be twisted. Data can be played with. And that's the thing. 
So when you're looking at the news, when you're looking at the world, you always have to be cognizant of what it is that you're looking for. Are people trying to deliver you the ac- absolute most transparent truth as they can give you, meaning they're finding as much as they possibly can? Because data will change. Things will change. You may not have all of the story. The story as we know it up until this point. You know, the great thing with the U.N. and the hockey stick, right, and, and, and the climate, because I said they say it's the hottest, you know, record uh, on record. It's the hottest year ever. We went up uh, one and a half degrees, right? And you're like, okay. It's like, did we go up one and a half degrees? I mean, how do we know? But those are the games that people play. How do I know? How do I trust you? Well, that hockey stick. Well, then you found out if, you, if you, you're, you're looking at a small little number of years, on something but then when you widen the whole thing out you're like that thing doesn't even exist exactly the numbers can be played with charts can be played with things can be done in such a way as to influence and so much of what you see out there in the world today is about influencing you based on fear not on facts because facts give you the driver's seat to make decision Fear gives them the opportunity to push you easier into a place that people want you to go. You know, Joe Rogan, doctors, uh, 200, 300 million doctors have signed up. and They want Joe Rogan uh, uh, and his societally harmful assertions uh, uh, taken down from Spotify. Why? Because some guy came on and had a conversation. Dr. Malone, you didn't like what he said. Okay. He talks to everybody. Hell, I'd love to have Dr. Malone on and somebody who disagrees with him. Let's have a serious conversation about it. Not a debate. You say this thing is super helpful and amazing. You say that mRNA isn't all it's cracked up to be. You were part of uh, the group that really found so much of this technology in the in the you know the 80s and 90s you over here uh, find this thing to be fantastic let's have a conversation about it let the people decide hey you know what i'm not quite sure maybe it's like the more i listen the more i understand do i think the vaccines are harmful no but will i talk to somebody who thinks that maybe there can be some stuff yeah. do i think the the media would be completely honest with you no why would they <laughs> look at the commercials Brought to you by Pfizer. Brought to you by Moderna. Johnson and Johnson. So, but you got these doctors. Huh? But you know the, the the media spins it. The numbers. That's three hundred doctors out of how many? Out of how many doctors have signed on to this? I have friends who have doctors, and both are like, yeah, you know what? This thing is it's it's nasty. I asked my doctor, uh, friend who's, who, who, of mine who we grew up together playing soccer. He was awful. He played for a very long time, by the way, at a high club level. But he was, we joke all the time. It's like he, he had hands of, 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 he was a goalie. His hands were like walls. And that's not a good thing. <laughs> he couldn't catch anything. But I said, dude, let me ask you a question. I said, without a vaccine for the flu, is this thing as far as his deadliness, about the same. He goes, probably. This thing spreads bigger. The neck gets bigger. And that's a big thing, right? Like, that's a kind of, that's the big side of what this thing is. Plus, we've had years to adjust our body and stuff to the flu, so even people don't get flu shots now really aren't in super harm's way when it comes to this is all new. And and, and that's it. He goes, and he goes, if you probably, if we really looked at the numbers, I think people would be surprised at what the real numbers look like. But he can't say that out loud. Can't. No. But the data is what you need to look at. So when you're looking at data, know that people, both right and left, are going to present you with something that they want you to see because it's an audience that they're reaching who already believes it. For the rest of us, the exhausted majority who would like to make up our own minds and situations and would love to hear both sides of something, We'd ask you just to give us the data and facts, ma'am, and we'll go from there. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Shows, your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Army's giving bonuses up to 50000 
They say they're struggling to lure soldiers. Phil and I were trying to figure out how do you get the bonus? Like, is it a check? Do we get it early? Is it like football? I got a good story about that. I got a player, I got a guy that works here. A couple, well, a lot of guys that work here played in the NFL, but one of them, a couple of them were first round picks. And I'm like, what was it like to get the money? We'll touch on that. It's kind of an interesting story. Comparatively to when I played soccer in Europe, even at the highest level, when I played low those many years ago, players made nothing compared to what they make now. Nothing. Guys make now in a week what players, great players made in a year. That's how crazy money is for some of this stuff. Oh, Car Shield protecting you, baby. Car Shield is protecting you this time of year. You're worried about your car, especially when you see inflation has pushed car, used car prices in particular up 40 percent almost so car shield comes in because you want to protect that car because new cars good luck trying to get one car shield's awesome you go to carshield.com slash benson there you save 10 percent. see all the great plans they have and they're amazing their administrators handle everything from the paperwork to the expensive repair you pay a small deductible and away you go so it doesn't matter if it's if it's the inside of your car maybe the stereo and all the electronics is going out maybe you've got problems with your transmission engine that you're worried about they've got plans for that to fit any budget over a million drivers been helped by car shield why not be one of them protect yourself in a time when cars you want to go longer because of the price of cars this is the perfect way to do it don't get stuck in deep freeze protect your wallet protect your car get car shield you choose your mechanic 24 7 roadside assistance a rental car for free they're the best carshield.com slash benson carshield.com slash benson 10 percent savings right there deductible may apply chad benson show Check out our Chad Benson Show Facebook page where you can hang out or hang your grievances out to dry. This is Chad Benson. That is me, ladies and gentlemen. That is me. If you guys haven't heard, uh, uh, Biden is going to be giving out more home tests that he doesn't have. <laughs> you guys, because, you know, he has, we don't even have an Internet website thingy. Get the WWW on it. Get the World Wide Web on this thing. And now he's like, save the receipt if you buy one. We'll have them reimburse you. The president also said there will be an additional half a billion <laughs> home tests that will be procured by the administration in order to distribute them for free. This is in addition to the $500 million they've already promised. So as he says, a billion tests in total is needed to meet what they think is the future demand. The future demand. A billion tests. Everybody's getting three tests. Ooh, 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 I have a bunch at home. How do you get it? When I went to get my booster shot, I told everybody, if you guys don't know how to get my booster shot, you got a booster shot? Yeah. I said, if it's absolutely the easiest thing in the world, I'm going to get a booster shot. If it's right next to me, I'm not. not. So I was uh, playing golf, and uh, these great people uh, that are part of members of the club also, because I live in the kind of, I joke about the Valley. There are people, Arizona City, we have kind of a, our fire department is part paid, part volunteer. They were having, and they're doing it again today, they're having booster shots available or first shots, whatever you want. And it was like, I'm serious, like 50, no, probably about 100 yards from the 17th tee, in between the 17th and the 18th tee at the fire station where I was coming across. I'm like, I'm going to get my booster shot. Walked in, it took me 15 minutes. And they give me a bunch of tests on the way out. They're like, here, take some of these. I'm like, all right, cool. There you go. He promised us all he was getting us tests. And then he's like, ah, I can't. The website, it's not. We, we're, you know, you know the thing. You know, January 6th, Trump's bad, bad guy. Coup, coup. Inclusivity, diversity. Use the, get the keywords out there. He's not, he's not going to have these tests. Not gonna be. You got to go buy your own test if you can find one, which you will be able to because people have over panicked. And I still wonder why so many people are going out and testing. This is a massive influx of because people. Ah, oh, you know, if you don't feel sick, even if you feel kind of sick, you should just play in the caution. If that's what you want. You know what? I just I got a sore throat and a bit of a cough. I'm just gonna be cautious about it. 
And if I find a test grade, if not, you just tell your work. I mean, it's it's ridiculous at this point. But he thought he was going to send out all these tests, one of the promises. He's like, I can't. I don't. We, we're not. I was lying. Can't do that for you. So be prepared for those. Be prepared for those. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. By the way, speaking of booster shots. I watched a couple of politicians be interviewed. And one of the questions was, did you get the booster? Because they had the vaccine. And they, oh, oh, they're answering it like, in other words, the answer is yes, but they don't want to say it. Because they're gutless. you got to say it. They're gutless. They're gutless. They're gutless. That was a big shot at Ron DeSantis. So, they're gutless. Gutless. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter Tweet at us. A lot of stuff still to get into. We talk about the Army bonus. They're having trouble. They bumped the bonus to 50K. 50K. Plus, a horrible judge tells a person with cancer. Shameful. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. So, 50 grand now if you are going to go to the Army. Have a chance to get a bonus of 50, 50 Gs. That's uh, because they're having some issues trying to uh, recruit people. No way. Yeah. We've heard that for the last several years. They're having more and more issues trying uh, to get people to join the army. And let me tell you something. If you're kind of smart and I have, I've got a couple buddies who went into the army, you know, 30 years ago and computers were really just emerging in any kind of home fashion worth a damn. And they'll tell you, man, you'll get the greatest education in the world when it comes to that. You can, you can get an amazing education. It's not just all about, let's go fight. Let's go do the, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot that goes into it. So 50K, though, we were trying to figure out if anybody, if you want to text me, 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. How exactly does that work? Is it a signing bonus? We were saying earlier, I was talking to a, we got a couple people here that were first round picks and they work over the sports station and a couple other places inside of the building in the NFL and they got some, some big money. And, you know, this was back in the day, they're older, this was back in the day when you, you got a check. <laughs> you didn't, they didn't just say, all right, we'll deposit it, you know, in two days or whatever. You got a check. And so they got, you know, seven figure signing bonuses. And they're like, you're walking around with this, you know, few million dollars in your pockets, kind of a weird thing. And then you go to the bank and they like, look at you, you're like, oh, and I got a buddy who plays professional golf and. And uh, uh, I said, how do you guys get paid? They said, well, on Tuesday after the tournament, they deposit whatever your winnings are in there. And then, of course, you pay your caddy out of that and stuff. But I don't know how it works in the Army. I've read several things that says that you get within 30 days, you get X amount of dollars, seven, not over 7000 But now that they bump this up, is that more? And then they pay you out over certain installments. So up to 50 grand. If you're looking for a gig, up to 50k as a signing bonus for the army. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text said program. Love hearing from all of you. Oh, Biden's out there still talking about, yes, I'm going to say it, the Omicron and still playing the game of 
Whose fault is it? Whose fault isn't it? What can we do about it? Can we do anything about it? Uh, and, you know, you, you just sit there and you're thinking to yourself, when are we going to move on? When are you going to give us the go to, to, to move on, if, if you will? If vaccinated people test positive, they overwhelmingly have either no symptoms at all or they have mild symptoms. And if, they're, if you're unvaccinated, if they test positive, there are, you are 17 times more likely, more likely to get hospitalized. Yeah. As a result, they're crowding our hospitals. No, not all of that. You talk to places, and yeah, in some places, are, you know what a lot of hospitals are saying? They're, they're crowding the emergency room. Well, during flu season and during a lot of other times, people use the emergency room as their primary care. So they go to the emergency room. Don't know what to do. They go to the emergency room. That happens. Secondly, that's 17 percent. They're 17 percent more likely to. That, that's another one of those data things that we've talked about. They take the data and they say, oh. 17 percent more to to happen okay what exactly does that mean all things being equal well not everything is equal what are you measuring that we're just looking at certain numbers there's no doubt that the vaccination has played a huge part in 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 saving lives you'd be foolish to think that it hasn't and if you don't think that it's it's done anything you're an idiot and that's just ridiculous People aren't getting vaccinated. And who is it mostly? It's white evangelicals, African-Americans, big Trump supporters in the South. You know what's happening in the South now? Walmart, over the last several weeks, has been delivering COVID shots. And you know what's happening? They're surprised. Why? Because people are getting them. People are getting them. The unvaccinated, if you will, the anti-vaxxers, are getting them at place like Walmart. And Walmart's whole thing is, is we met them where they were at. I think I, I said it a year ago. You're not put it in a Walmart. You're gonna find more Trump voters. But allow them to make the decision. When you do that, like anything in life, my little my little girl. She is full of piss and vinegar. Jack is sweet and he's kind and he is not obstinate. <laughs> Charlie is piss and vinegar. She's iron and nails. She will look right at you and say, she is so much like that. So I take a different approach. Let them decide at times. In, in certain ways, because when you push back, it becomes far more than it should have. And that's what it ended up happening. Like everything else, we turn everything into politics. Voting is another one of those insane things that's going on right now. You know, you've got you've got the, the, the president of the United States coming out and giving out one of the most. I heard a couple of buddies of mine who do radio. Great guys uh, say the other day. And, and I agree with them. One hundred percent, arguably one of the most divisive speeches in modern history from a president. When you compare people like Bull Connor, if you don't know who he is, he was, if you go to Central Casting and say, I need the worst human being I can find to be a politician and then boss hog in Birmingham, Alabama in the 60s, who will sick dogs on civil rights activists, who will hide the Ku Klux Klan, and who will be brutal and complicit in beating and murders. That's him. But when you say, hey, you're not going to uh, vote for the the getting rid of the filibuster and the voting rights amendment, well, then you are essentially those people he shouted that if you disagree with him you're george wallace george wallace if you don't pass the laws he wants 
your Bull Connor. He compared, listen to this, a bipartisan majority of senators to literal traitors. How profoundly, profoundly unprecedented. Yeah. Yeah. Just to give you an idea of how bad Bull Connor was, who was just brutal. Because of him, the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing, destroying a portion of the church basement, causing the deaths of four little girls, right, was a huge part of it. Because of him. Stuff like that ended up being allowed. Because of him, the Freedom Riders, disappearance of, of civil rights activists, those kind of things happened on his watch. You're, you're, you're comparing people to that? That's not, you know, that that's not helping. But you'd rather do that than talk about inflation, right? Because that's easier to talk about. Because when you look around and you go, man, inflation's through the roof, the economy, I, this feels uncomfortable. I'm paying how much more? $3,600, the average American family will essentially pay more this year towards average goods based on today's inflation rates. Could it go down? Possibility is there. Could it rise? Possibility is there. But on average, $3,600. Wow. Prices are up. People are frustrated. Are they sitting around saying, this is the number one thing I'm worried about? Yes. You mean they're not talking about the coronavirus? Well, the coronavirus in so much as it, what kind of impact is this going to have on my livelihood? I think the the the, the fear of, of getting it and dying is, I think for most people, they've made their, their, their understanding of, I either got a shot or I will eventually get one or... Or, you know, I'm never going to get one. They're fine with that, and they're living with that. Or on the other side of things, are you going to shut down my business? My kid's going to have to stay home. He wants to get rid of the filibuster. He wants to change the rules in the Senate and get rid of the filibuster. Simply taking the Senate and saying, well, you guys are no different than Congress now, but you have six years and you don't need a you just need a simple majority and because of that simple majority uh the 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 battle of doing and then undoing and then doing and then undoing it's going to be nuts it's going to be nuts that's where they're pushing paychecks aren't keeping up with people people are frustrated across the board at where we're headed and we don't feel like we're getting any closer when you watch the media and the media is not talking about inflation this way. I mean, they're being forced to, but a lot of that establishment don't want any part of this. It's not a good look. It's not. It is not a good look. You feel it. I went to the gas station, filled up yesterday. I had like a third of a gallon left. It cost me $50. 50 Normally, 45 a year ago would have filled my car up. I still had a third of a tank, and it cost me 50 bucks. I drive a lot. I feel it. That's what people are talking about. 323-538-2423. At Chad Renson. Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Young Jevity is amazing. Supplements are incredible. Right now, 90 essential nutrients. This is what I want you to try. So it's 90 essential nutrients. As you guys know, we don't get the fruits and vegetables we need. We fail at that. What do we eat? Sugar, fat, carbohydrates, you name it. We eat it if it's not good for us and if it's convenient. So what do we need to do? We need to replace those. That's where Longevity's 90 for Life comes in. It's awesome. 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, powerful blend of uh, essential fatty acids. And they put this thing together over decades, and it's incredible. Advanced nutrition for yourself. 90 careful, selected nutrients for your body. What does it do? You thrive. You feel amazing. Gives you tons of energy. Look at me. I'm up at 3. I'm home at 7. Not 3 in the afternoon or 7 at night. 3 in the morning, 7 o'clock at night. Long day. I 
love what I do. I've got tons of energy. Go to chadbensonhealth.com right now. Kickstart true wellness and experience these amazing products for yourself. Tons of them. Chadbensonhealth.com or call 855-321-HEALTH. 855-321-HEALTH or chadbensonhealth.com. Chad Benson Show. Being antisocial sucks. Hang with Chad's friends on Facebook, The Chad Benson Show. And if you just need some alone time, head on over to Twitter at Chad Benson Show. Either way, we can't wait to meet the real you. She was a megastar and arguably one of the great leads in girl bands. Ronnie Spector passed away, and man, that voice. Ronnie Spector's voice, instantly recognizable on hits including Be My Baby. Born Veronica Bennett, she was the leader of the 60s girl group The Ronettes, busting out five top 40 singles. They toured with the Rolling Stones and the Beatles, Spector marrying music super producer Phil Spector, a marriage she described as abusive. The Ronettes made it into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2007. Ronnie Spector's family says she died after a brief battle with cancer. She was 78. Yeah. Married to, of course, Phil Spector. Uh, uh, insane. Like, we know that. But, man, her voice. Take Me Home Tonight. Take Me Home Tonight. Oh, what a great song that was. Kind of made a, a, a comeback somewhat. But just amazing. Just amazing. And this year we have lost. It's, it's, it seems like we're losing a ton. Probably because of the booster. Oh, Chad, it's not. You know that was out there. I already saw it with Betty White, Harry Reid. Uh, who else Who else died? Uh, you had uh, Bob Saget and several, you know, others. Just, oh, yeah, it's because of the, uh, it's because of the booster. It's because of the booster. It wasn't because of the booster. My goodness me. It wasn't. Speaking of hearts. Would you have a pig heart? Surgeons at the University of Maryland transplanted the pig heart into 57-year-old David Bennett in a last-ditch effort to save his life. During the nine-hour operation, doctors replaced Bennett's heart with one from a 240-pound pig, which was genetically modified for this purpose. According to his family, Bennett is aware there's no guarantee the experiment will work, but he agreed to the procedure because he's ineligible for a human heart transplant. Oh, so he went for it. Going for a pig heart. It's not the first time this type of procedure has taken place. In September, doctors at New York University transplanted a genetically modified pig kidney into a patient who was brain dead. They say the pig kidney functioned normally in the patient's body for 54 hours. The new procedures mark a major step in the decades-long quest to use animals as organ donors. I thought we were supposed to be growing these or printing them. Isn't that the new thing? Are we not done with that yet? Have we not tried that enough? So we're going to throw in a pig heart. If you're desperate, right? We'll just see, you know? I mean, let's just see what happens. You grew it, and the choice is this or death for certain. But would you? What if they came to you and said, look, the only thing we have, we've looked. We looked in the back. Where are you, Petco? And they're like, uh, you can get a bearded dragon heart. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, or you have a poodle heart. You're like, ah, oh, I guess, I guess I go the beardy. For him, it provided a level of hope. My dad's only 57 years old. So that was, that was very important to him. And he didn't feel like he was ready to die. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's interesting. It is. The new heart is still a rock star, man doing well. So, yeah, I mean, if they told you, look, this is it. The ethics of the second chance. Pig heart transplant recipient stabbed a man several times years ago. And now he's got a pig heart. Now is is that why he's ineligible? So you have to go with that. Pig heart, would you do it? Yes or no? 
Very interesting. Solid fun show as always. Gotcha. Through the day. We toss this thing away. Get ready for the thing that we love so much. Oh, there it is. I uh, oh, uh, you can hide. I, I see you. I see Friday. Night night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.